Uh, but first of all, I'm joined by Lord John Hutton. He's a Labour bigwig. He was former Defence Secretary and Business Secretary, a very close ally of Tony Blair's. Lord Hutton, lovely to speak to you today. I know you don't often do that much media or come on GB News, so it's great to have you as a new guest on this show. Now, let's talk about migration first of all. It quadrupled under Labour. It was five times the major government. It now stands legal migration at 606,000. What do you think the Labour Party's solution to this should be? Well, I think immigration is too high. I think most people accept that. Um, there's no easy solution to this problem, though. It's a global phenomenon. People are moving around. And I think we've got to certainly deal with the, the boats, the illegal entry. But I think we've got to take a very long, hard look at um, the other aspects of immigration policy. David Davis referred to families of students coming in and so on. I mean, I think there are things that can be done. But it's got to be done in a way that um, doesn't damage the economy and supports the growth agenda. I think these are important issues for us now because I think securing economic growth is probably the biggest economic challenge that we face. Yes. We're not growing as an economy quickly enough, and that doesn't allow us to support our public services in the way that we, we want to. So there is a very big challenge to be done there. And I, I'm basically, Kamala, not in favour of a sort of quick fix some slogans to fix this problem because it's, it's a complicated set of issues that we've got to face here and I don't want to pander to um, the, the sort of the negative forces here that see immigration per se as a bad thing. Immigration yeah. is not a bad thing for the UK as long as it's handled pro properly and, uh, and well. Do you think the Labour voters worry about it, though? I mean, a lot said about people on the right and, you know, the re-emergence of my colleague here at GB News, Nigel Farage, and all the rest of it. But it's also a concern on Labour doorsteps, isn't it, these sorts of numbers? Yeah. Oh, definitely. I mean, I remember, you know, all the time I was a Member of Parliament, people would come and see me and say, you know, Mr. Hutton, we've, we've got to do something about the levels of immigration. This is not a, an issue that is easily characterised as on the left, people think this, on the right, they think that. Mm. I think most people who aren't really left or right, but are sort of sensibly in the middle, are worried about um, what this means for our public services, our housing, and everything else. And those are perfectly reasonable concerns. That That's not racism. Sure. Um, and I think we, we should be clear about that. Now, I remember a while ago you were quoted... <laughs> Off the record, I think, describing Gordon Brown being perhaps an effing disaster for the country when he was about to become Prime Minister. I know you're very aligned to Tony Blair. How do you view Sir Keir Starmer? Because a lot of people say that he lacks his charisma and magnetism. Is Keir Starmer the person to take Labour voters over the top come 2024, do you think? Yeah, I, I think he is. And I, I think Keir faces very similar challenges to those that faced Tony back in 1994 and 95. We've got to repair the enormous damage done to the Labour Party by Jeremy Corbyn. And, you know, the country in 2019 took one look at us and said, no, thank you very much indeed. And I think not many people thought we'd be back in a position where we could be competing for public office again in the space of one parliament. And we are. And I think that's down to Keir. He's shown leadership. He's taken Labour back to the centre ground where we have to be. We have to broaden our appeal to mm. if SNP Lib Dem at the last election. And that, that, that's a really tough gig. You know, he's got to keep his focus on broadening Labour's appeal. And he's doing it in his own way and style. And I think he's doing it very effectively. I mean, we've got a significant poll lead. A lot of people think Keir will be, will be Prime Minister. But it's not 1997 again, is it, Lord Hutton? I mean, there's not this huge clamour around Sir Keir. No. In fact, some of the polling, when people are asked, what do you make of the Labour leader, the response has been, don't know. That's been the predominant response. I think that's true, but I also think, Kamala, that I think there is a sense that we need a, a change in our politics. And I am old enough, and David Davis is referring to old, being old enough to remember inflation. I, I'm old enough to remember the time when Jim Callahan was facing off against Margaret Thatcher in the run-up to the 79 election. And on every poll, Jim outpolled Margaret Thatcher significantly as the best person to lead the country. But we got absolutely hammered. Uh, mm -hmm. So I think really the, the zeitgeist is, is there a mood for change? I think undoubtedly there is. There's been so many terrible mistakes made and, and an embarrassing series of political sort of disasters in the last 12 months. I think there's undoubtedly a mood for change. And I think the, the challenge for Keir is to keep riding that mood for change and making sure that Labour is the party that has the broadest appeal yes. and has a sensible plan for growth and growing the economy. And, and those are still issues I think that Labour's got to address. But I think we're undoubted Labour's on the right path now. 
Could Tony Blair be doing more for the Labour movement? I mean, there isn't a week that goes by that I don't receive an email from the Tony Blair Foundation. There's been a bit of a talk in the past about former prime ministers, both on the right and left, doing a bit too much backseat driving. Is that a fair criticism of your former colleague? I, do, I don't think Tony is trying to be a backseat driver. I mean, he is a person who's got very strong views about the world and they're, they're formed by his experience, not just in government, but since leaving government. And I think it'd be a very sensible thing for the Labour Party to continue to listen to, to what Tony is saying about the challenges of the future. But it isn't, you know, a simple question of going back to what Tony did in 1994, 1995, 96. These are different times. It's a completely different political landscape. And I think Keir Starmer has got to tackle these problems in the way that he has done, using his own personality and style, um, and make sure that it's the policy, that the policy is right for the country. I mean, people will hammer away at politicians. Well, you don't smile enough, you don't look enough, you don't look well enough, you know, you don't dress well enough. And fine, all that stuff is going on in the background. But at the end of the day, people have to trust your sense of where you want to take the country. Uh, and that's, that's the fundamental challenge for Labour and all of the Labour front bench team, is to keep focusing on those big issues that we face as a country, and they're different from, from where they were 30 years ago. Do you think Labour are doing enough, Lord Hutton, on the so-called culture wars? I mean, I know there are some on the left that say it's all completely overhyped, but I think they do bother people on the doorstep. Got this strange situation where Sir Keir Starmer can't quite bring himself to define what a woman is and whether or not she does or doesn't have a penis. What do you think on that? Well, uh, I think undoubtedly, you know, this is an issue that does concern some people. And, uh, and I think we've got to, again, I, with respect, say, that the focus has got to be on making sure Britain remains a tolerant, inclusive, fair and equal society. But I think there is also a pretty obvious role for, for common sense in this debate as well. Uh, and it shouldn't really be that difficult to define a, a man and a woman. And in fact, there are very clear legal definitions for what they are. So I don't want to see us getting tied up in knots about this. Um, and I don't want us to be seen to be banging a drum that's so out of tune with where yeah. most people in the country are, that, you know, people just think, well, hang on, what are you guys talking about? That, that's not my world. So let's keep our, our feet on the ground, but let's not pander to those who want to take us back to, uh, to different social times and different social mores, because we are a different country now. And there's got to be a place, a, a fair and decent place for everyone, whatever their sexual orientation or gender identity might be. Let's have a final word on pensions, because I know you did a lot of work in this area when you were in government. Um, concerns, perhaps, that some policies are a bit too focused in favour of the over 65s. Do you, for instance, think that the triple lock should remain, first of all? Well, I've said previously, I think the triple lock is going to be very, very hard to sustain. Uh, and I think we've got to strike a fairer balance between making sure pensioners are well supported in their old age because, of course, they've got very limited opportunities to, to top up their pensions with any earnings. But mm. we've got to make sure that the welfare state is fair to young families with children too. And it's a terrible thing that at the moment young families with children are the ones who are facing rising levels of poverty. So this issue about the balance of spending within the, our welfare state has got to be addressed. And we, we yeah. can't sit back and ignore the needs of young families with children. It's terrible to see them struggling. Do you think we're going to see a situation where in, I don't know, 10, 20 years' time, state pension might need to be means tested? No, I, d I don't think that's likely to be necessary. Uh, I hope it isn't. Um, you know, people have contributed to all their working lives, those people who are paying national insurance, to, yes. to a, state, a decent state pension. And I don't think we can then rip up the rule book and say, sorry, we've changed our mind. You've paid for this pension. We're not giving it to you. No, I, d I don't think that's um, plain fair by the rules. Lord Hutton, thank you very much indeed for joining me this morning. Lovely to speak to you. You're very welcome. Thank you for having me.